Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. President Dilma Rousseff has promised to reunite Brazil after narrowly winning re-election to a second term of office with 51.6% of the vote. She said dialogue would be her top priority after a bitterly fought campaign against the center-right candidate, Asio Nives, who got 48.4% of the vote. Now with us to discuss the elections is Michael Fox. Michael is with Telesur English. He's coming to us from Quito, Ecuador. He's the co-author of Latin America's Turbulent Transitions, The Future of 21st Century Socialism. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael. Thanks so much for having me. Michael, I remember the last time Dilma Rousseff won her election. I remember the LA Times that read uh, Gorilla, revolutionary guerrilla wins presidency in Brazil. Had she lived up to her expectations? It's a great question. I mean, in a lot of ways she has. She was just reelected. Um, and if you see where the vote's coming from, you know, she ran on a campaign that was kind of following in her predecessor, Lula da Silva's um, steps, which was really focused on trying to lift up the poor. Uh, you know, he had this whole pro program that was zero hunger, right? And she followed in those footsteps of really trying to um, make a difference, social inclusion, create social programs for those people that didn't have it before, and really focusing on kind of the center to the northeastern part of Brazil, where you have kind of the, the lower economic class of the country. And if you look at where um, the election on yesterday, where she got the majority votes, the states where she won, is kind of all of the north, the northeast, this whole se you know section of the country. And so she's kind of followed in those same footsteps as, as Lula. She's... Um, been able to, you know, the, under the, the PT government since 2002, 2003, they've been able to decrease uh, poverty by half, extreme poverty by two thirds, increase the minimum wage by 300 uh, percent and and so on and so forth. So uh, it's been, you know, largely due to a lot of these social programs, which have really lifted up um, tens of millions of people out of poverty and into the middle of the class. Now, one thing uh, I understand she hadn't done, and I was in Brazil not too long ago, where people in social movements and MSD, for example, um, that's the Landless People's Movement, uh, had complained that, you know, unlike Lula, she actually hadn't taken the time to hear their concerns, do the kinds of changes she had promised to do uh, in, the, in the campaign, and she wasn't so great at carrying out Lula's legacy. Um, uh, how do you respond to that? I think, um, obviously, agrarian reform has, has been an issue, not just under Dilma, but also under the Lula years. If you talk with folks in, in the MST, uh, compared with, say, support for the agro industry and also larger development in Brazil. At the same time, the same folks from the MST and, and social movements understand that um, the PT governments and, and Dilma herself was kind of the, the, the only option for for real political change. Aceo Neves was a candidate, a uh, right-wing candidate that, you know, wanted to roll back these same things. If you look at his policies under uh, his governorship in Minas Gerais for seven or eight years, he spent under the minimum that he should have on education and health and other spending like that. Um, and so, you know, and that's how come folks like the MST or the MTSC, which is kind of the urban version of, of the landless peoples, um, you know, obviously came out in, in support of Dilma. But, you know, if things aren't perfect, but uh, they're a lot better than they would have been under ACO. I realize social movements really had no choice here. They had to support Rousseff's candidacy and presidency. Um, yet, uh, it ha did she make any promises in terms of uh, being more open to social movements and addressing their concerns in, in the next uh, uh, presidency? I think the really big thing, that, and she mentioned this uh, shortly after you know, her victory last night um, that she really is going to be pushing for in, in the next uh, few years is political reform. Uh, and this comes out of a really important referendum that happened about two or three months ago um, in which roughly eight million people voted in a referendum saying we want some political reform. We want some sort of a constituent assembly to come out of it. It was, it was non-binding and it was actually um, run and led by the social movements in Brazil. 
uh, and and supported by Lula and eventually by Dilma. And I think that this is a really important thing because basically what they're saying is we want money out of politics. Uh, we have to change what politics looks like in Brazil, particularly in the Senate and the Congress. Um, we need to ensure that there's accountability. Basically, what you have right now, and, and, and this is according to an organization, a transparency organization based in Brazil, just in this second round um, elections, right, of the governors, and I don't have all the figures, but of the governors that were running, I think something like 10 or 12 candidates were under investigation for corruption and other illegal acts. And this is like a very common thing in Brazil. Uh, and this is something that folks are really, really concerned about is, is how can we really create political for reform um, from below? And that's what the grassroots movements have been kind of calling for. And that's something that Dilma was really clear in, in coming out just over the last day and saying this is going to be one of the first things I really want to focus on. Right. And besides uh, corruption, which I agree is a major uh, issue for Brazil to tackle, when she said unite Brazil, uh, what did she mean by this? Because when, when we had more neoliberal and liberal, uh, say, President uh, Obama, for example, when he says, you know, I'm, I'm not a uh, Democrat or Republican, I'm the president of the United States of America, this notion of unity usually means a shift to the right, not left. It's a really good question. I mean, I, I think that at the same time as she says that, she's also really clear, and, 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 and most people are, that uh, another uh, term for Dilma Rousseff means continual you know, uh, social inclusion policies, um, continual economic policies that Brazil has been pushing, continued kind of international integration across the region uh, that you've been seeing between Brazil and these other countries. Um, and so it's a really good question about exactly what this does mean. You also have uh, a, a situation in the Congress, which I think might be another reason why she's also saying we really need to unite. The Congress um, is one of the most conservative that you've had uh, in in recent years, and it's it's really broken up with, within a lot of different um, uh, parties. But it's also made up of a lot of folks that come from you know big business elite. The, the, the big uh, agricultural sector and whatnot. And so it's going to be uh, hard to see, you know, how to push things through within the Congress at this point, because um, it is one of the most conservative in years. And so I think there's a lot of things to, to look at uh, and understand within the, the next couple of years and see where things go. Right, and we will be keeping a watch, and I hope you join us in that uh, endeavor, Michael. Definitely. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you for joining us and thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.